natural hair versus the Babylon system. Let's talk about it. This brother here, myself, all of us were born with our hair like this, and we just wear it like this because it's natural, because uh, the reason for it, you might say, is like a new awareness among black people that their own natural appearance, its physical appearance is beautiful and it's pleasing to them. For so many, many years, we were told that only white people were beautiful. Only straight hair, light eyes, light skin was beautiful. And so black women would try everything they could, straighten their hair, lighten their skin, to look as much like white women. But this has changed because black people are aware. There are a lot of different reasons that people are discriminated against in this Babylon system. Of course, the color of their skin is major because, you know, if you're a homosexual, you don't have to tell anybody. But, you know, I mean, I can't prevent anybody from seeing I have this skin. Uh, people that are overweight are discriminated against a lot of times. Uh, people are discriminated against for being females. Women are discriminated against a lot. People are discriminated against for being homosexuals, especially if they're outwardly homosexual. They face a lot of discrimination. People are discriminated against for being short, like uh, dwarfs and midgets. And people are discriminated against for hair, uh, dreadlocks, braids, beards, mustaches. People face a lot of discrimination because of that. Now, for me, growing dreadlocks in 1979 is an unimaginable experience for the average person. Uh, one time I was on the show doing an interview not too long ago, and a guy said, oh, you know, you just, I mean, it's no big deal because you grew some hair. And he was a young black guy, and I just knew that the, the conversation was just way over his head. I mean, he's young. He's born at a time where he looks out and he sees people with dreadlocks working at post office, uh, driving CTA buses, driving uh, city transportation. You know, people with dreadlocks have slowly been allowed to enter into the system, although recently the Supreme Court upheld the point, the fact that uh, a job could uh, reject you because you have dreadlocks. But when I started growing dreadlocks in 1979, I was one of the first uh, in black American history. As a matter of fact, it was so few blacks in America that had dreadlocks that when I would go to another city, the black people would take me to the one or two people they knew that had dreadlocks. This is how I became so uh, popular and knew so many people so quick when I would go to different cities, because in these various cities, 
the black men or women that had dreadlocks were the cultural icons. They were looked at as the top tier of the cultural community, which is now called the conscious community. So any city I would go in, they say, oh, wow, you got dreadlocks. You got to meet brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so. And they would take me to them. And then through them, I would meet everyone in that city that was culturally aware. But uh, in those days, discrimination was still bad for black people. So to be black and have dreadlocks, I faced a double discrimination. So in some cases where there was jobs where uh, they were hiring blacks, they still would not hire me. So this forced me to um, basically get out of the system and become a businessman. I was forced to be an entrepreneur. When I was a child, I was one of the smartest kids in school. So, you know, the sky was the limit. You know, it was just me and my sister, and I was smarter than my sister. My sister took tutoring when we was in grade school. I never had to take any tutoring or anything like that. And today my sister is an engineer. So you can just imagine the opportunities that would have been there for me, but I wouldn't go back and change anything because it's a fight and it's a battle that I fought that uh, was well worth it. And when you see black people and all other people in America walk around with dreadlocks, I'm one of the pioneers of that. I remember one time in Los Angeles, uh, I was looking for a job and I was calling a lot of people and when you're looking for a job, people don't know how hard that is because you don't have money. So every every dollar you spend for bus fare or to move around is taken away from the money you might have to eat off of. Anyway, finally some people, I call it was like two and a half blocks away. And they say, yeah, we're hiring. Come right on in. And of course, you could tell on the phone I was a black man. And I went down there and I must have got there and like, you know, four or five minutes later, when I walked in the door, you could see the black people that worked there and the white guy that owned the place. And you could see everybody just stop and stare at me. So I walked up to the counter. I said, I just called. You said you had to open it. And the guy said, oh, no, that, that opening has been filled. Come on, in three, four minutes. But it was my hair. And even the other black people uh, discriminated against me. So this is why I reject when people say, well, what did your generation do and what did you do? What they don't understand is I stood alone. There was no black community that supported me with dreadlocks. This is a fact. Black people rejected me. You did have every now and then some black people run down the street. I didn't know why they was chasing me and they run up to me, breathing hard, say, how'd you get your hair like that? But for the most part, people laugh, people told jokes. I walked by people, they would say, Shaba, you know, tell Jamaican jokes. And uh, so there was no, um, there was no way I could have done anything with the black community. This is something that is way over people's heads. There was no support from the black community for black people that had dreadlocks in the early 70s. This is a fact. And hair discrimination is one of the hugest discriminations in America and probably in the world because just like your skin, your hair is just right there. So whether a man is Hispanic, white, or black, whatever, you know, if he wants to grow his beard, he can't. The job wants him to be clean shaven. You know, if he wants to grow long hair, he can't, you know. I have friends here that are white, and uh, they would work at jobs, and their hair would be long, and they try to twist it up into a little ball and put it in the back and put their suit and tie on. But after so long, they, they get passed by for promotions. People make certain little cracks, and they have to bow down and cut their hair. So in a lot of ways, there's a lot of white males that have opted out of the system just so they can keep long beards and long hair. They became artists or dancers or sculpture. They do sculpturing 
They work for themselves. There, are, There's a lot of people. They develop their own industries. Like I go and I eat at demos and I get the vegan pizza and you can see it's an underculture of Europeans and they have a pizza place and you know they have their earplugs in, they have their tattoos, they have their long hair, they dress rock and rolly, they have opted out of the system and created their own way of waking, of uh, making money and they hire blacks too that are also outside of the system because the Babylon system is against you looking natural. So a lot of times people, when they try to act like they're really totally anti Babylon, but they have haircuts and shaving, they're not quite as outside of Babylon as they would like to think. See, anytime your haircut goes along with the Babylon system, you really need to tone down your radical talk because you're not quite as radical as those of us that totally go against the system by growing out our natural hair. You're just not. You're, you know, um, within the black conscious community now, I see a lot of people that imagine that they are more against the system than they actually are. They're not really against the system like they think. So they choose their days to put their onks on and their red, black, and green, and then they play RBG or comedic or whatever for a day or two. But at any time, they can put the suit and tie on without that hair on their head, and they can go out into the world and they can be a part of the Babylon system. And only only way I could even pretend to be a part of the Babylon system, I have to go cut my locks off my head. It's just a fact. Now, for a lot of black people, a lot of times they're not very honest. So, you know, some of the brothers, they'd be comedic, and they want to show me way back some person in Kemet, you know, with the haircut. But the reality in 2017 is the reason that a lot of black men especially cut their hair is because they're ashamed of their natural hair. Now, some are going bald, and so that's why they cut it. And that's understandable because, you know, you're going bald. You don't want to just grow the sides out. You know, although a lot of roster men do, if they're roster men, they got locks and the top come out. They don't cut the side locks. They just stay 100% natural. But it's not realistic to request everyone become that type of rebel. Requesting that everyone becomes the type of rebel I am is like requesting everyone to uh, be like in the military, to carry guns and be a black defense group. You know, you have your militants that will fight, that will be like your army. You have your radicals that will represent the extremes of being natural and the extremes fight against Babylon. But until you have your own system, it's not reasonable to expect everyone to do what you do. So it's not reasonable for me to expect every black person to grow dreadlocks if I can't hire them. This is just a fact. At the same time, they must respect my fight and they must put me on a higher pedestal than the average and respect that I fight Babylon every day with my skin but more so with my hair because I personally have been, dis been discriminated against a lot worse because of dreadlocks than because of being black. You know, so we want to bring natural hair back. You know, women are going out here and putting all these chemicals into their brains. And you got to understand that if your hair is growing out of your head, there's holes in your head, obviously and you're doing real bad damage to your scalp and to your brain. I started growing my dreadlocks in 1979, but uh, I asked my parents, could I get a natural in about the fourth or fifth grade? 
you know, sometime in the 60s, you know, maybe around 69, 68. Somewhere in there, I asked to get a natural. You know, I seen the natural. I seen the, the, they didn't call it the Afro originally. They called it the natural look. So I went, I told my mother, Mom, can I, uh, can I get the natural? She said, no, you're not going to call me. But, you know, when my father would take me to the barbershop, I protested and protested, you know, because back then, you know, they would cut it down real short on the sides and just leave like a little on the top. You know, they even had a thing called a bush where, you know, it grew up on the top, but they cut the sides off. But they wouldn't let me just grow the natural. And I just wanted the natural. So eventually I got my natural. I was so happy, you know. I was just excited. I loved my natural. And my mother was right, you know. She knew I wasn't going to come in and look at me now. But when I started growing my dreadlocks, uh, it was a war against the Babylon system 100%. Fire for the Babylon, you know. I do not support the Babylon system. I would never cut my hair to work for eight hours. What they wanted me to do is they wanted me to cut my hair to work for eight hours. And there's 24 hours in a day. So they wanted me to give up my 16 hours for myself with my dreadlocks for their eight hours. So they only want to pay me eight hours, but they wanted to own me for 24 hours. And that's what's going on when you cut your hair for your job and shave for your job. They own you 24 hours a day, and they're paying you eight hours a day. You are basically an economical slave in a Babylon system. And this Babylon system is out to make everyone have the industrial age European look. No matter what anybody says, uh, uh, certain Europeans have came up with a look, and that look is what they call clean shaven. And they expect all other Europeans to look like that. They expect Hispanics, Asians, Blacks, and everyone to adapt that European Babylon look. And so when a black man goes to the barbershop, he is definitely emulating the European Babylon look. He is a good slave. You see, one of the first things they did with the Nyabingi Natijred man from Africa, before they put you on the slave block, they cut them dreads off of your head. They made sure that the dreadlocks came off so you would be a presentable slave. Okay? They wanted you to look what they call presentable. They don't want you to look like a Mau Mau warrior, like a buffalo soldier. They want you to look like a good boy. So they cut your hair off and put you on the slave block. So growing these dreadlocks in 79, that built the character that you see where I don't hesitate to spit fire on people because uh, there was resentment from a lot of people that were cultural slash conscious because with the dreadlock, we seemed to be cockier, and we were. We seemed to be superior, and we were. So in 79, 80, 81, I wouldn't hesitate to tell a brother, look, you're going to go home and take that motherfucking African clothes off and you're going to be back a bald head motherfucker. And I'm going to be this lion 24 hours. So don't stand here and try to pretend you ever on my level in your fucking life because you're not. You're not. Okay. I had a brother make a comment. He said, dreadlocks don't make you righteous. No, dreadlocks don't make you righteous but it make you in a war 
it make you definitely in a war against Babylon 24-7 more so than a guy with a, a shaved head. A guy with a shaved head walking down the street that's black conscious in regular clothes is just like a homosexual in the closet. Don't nobody know what type of consciousness or what you represent until you open your mouth, till you go back and put your red, black, and green on, till you put your, your little outfit on. But I could wear this suit, a tie, a shirt and tie, African clothes, whatever. As far as the Babylon system concerned with this hair on my head, I'm still the same person. When they see me with the big hat, they say, you got dreads under there? They know what it is. So there's a level. Now, when I moved to Hawaii in 84, Bob Marley had become more popular after he died. And Bob Marley is one of the greatest prophets of our era. His music was definitely prophetic. And Bob Marley changed the image of the black man because when black people were getting beat and water holes in the 60s, the image of the black man was an image of a coward. So when I grew my dreadlocks and started moving across the world, especially when I went to a place I would call a foreign country, because going to Hawaii is just like going to Asia or just like going to Polynesia, Micronesia, or Melanesia. Uh, going to Hawaii, I was around more people that were from other cultures. And I got more respect than a black person with a haircut. This is just a fact. I was honored as the almighty Rasta man. I was not treated like a nigga Popolo slave. See, they call it, they call the regular blacks Popolo, which is a blackberry. And in Hawaii, they didn't have much respect for Popolo, for your regular black person with the haircut. Because you reminded them of what the media showed them of a weak motherfucker. But the rest of man is the first time since the 60s that the black man started having respect again. Because the black power movement, you know, with the, with the, um, the black panthers, the black panthers and the whole black is beautiful movement gave a lot of pride to black people, gave black people some respect. But the media didn't cover them as much as they covered, you know, the Bill Cosby's and the Sammy Davis Jr.'s. But when we started growing dreadlocks because of the popularity of reggae music and because reggae music became an international music around the world, the black man with dreadlocks was looked as a king, not as a slave, not as a coward. It was known in Hawaii that if you mess with us, you know, we're going to fight. You know, because what is it? Get up, stand up. Stand up for your rights. Get up, stand up. Don't give up the fight. So they knew the roster man represented Naya Bingi, deaf to all oppressors, black and white. Represented the Mau Mau warrior in Kenya. Represented the Buffalo soldier, a warrior. Not a coward. So natural hair is a fight against the unnatural Babylon system. And, you know, I encourage black women to start wearing their natural hair. Stop straightening your hair. Because every day you straighten your hair, you are saying that you are inferior. You are saying that your creator made a mistake on your hair. And if you cut your hair, be honest and admit it that you cut it because you're ashamed of it and you cut it because you're not strong enough to fight for your own independence and your own jobs. You know, I see black men saying that they want to separate from the European system and they got a haircut. Well, your head does not look like you want to separate. Your head looks like you want to go shine shoes down at the fucking train station. You look like a good nigga, like a peach. You don't look separate. You see, in the scriptures, when it talks about 
growing your dreadlocks. In the book of Numbers chapter 6, it says separate yourself. Separate yourself. And that's what my locks on my head represent. Now, some people say, but why you call them dreadlocks? They're not dreadful. You got to understand with the original roster man, we was terrible and dreadful. The Some of the first modern history of dreadlocks is the Mau Mau. And it's also these group of Ethiopian warriors that started to not do anything to their hair as a protest for Emperor Haile Selassie I the first being exiled and being in England. So they started growing their locks on their head as a protest until His Majesty returned to Ethiopia. And that was the first time they were called dreadlocks for people that don't know their history because these warriors were considered dreadful if you got into a war with them. And I do not have locks because locks, you know, sounds like, you know, Goldilocks. No, I got dreadlocks. Okay? I ain't nothing to fucking play with. I don't got no locks. But somebody say, well, I don't have locks because they're not dreadful. I said, because you're a pussy, that's why. Sit your little weak motherfucking ass down. You're turning your shit into a fucking hair, hairstyle of some pussy shit. You know, and now people say, well, it's not righteous because look at all the gangbangers in Chicago. The dreadheads are shooting everybody with their locks. Well, I can say one thing. They might be shooting the wrong people, but they some motherfucking warriors. I tell you that. They deserve the shooters in Chicago. The dreadhead shooters in Chicago deserve their locks more than some of you pansies out here switching around and strutting around. You know, one thing I can say about the black man, he's turning into a pussy. You know, you got these guys that go get the dreadlocks, and then they fucking shave around and get a line, and they be trying to twist them all in and look all cute. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I like your hair. You need to get some motherfucking panties and a skirt to go with that shit with your bitch ass. The fuck out of here. Is you a warrior? Or is you a fucking model for Vogue magazine? Come on now. Y'all can fuck up a wet dream. Dreadlocks supposed to be rough. You know, back in the day, I would have women approach me and they'd be like, oh, what's that in your hair? I said, I got dreadlocks. These dreadlocks, they're like, oh. Yeah, I used to tell them. Yeah, I'm rough, but I'm lovable. Because one thing about it is, I want to be rough. I ain't want to be cute, you know? I don't want to be no motherfucking cute. Okay, monkeys is cute, you know? I'd rather be feared than loved. You see, because it's a war on Babylon, okay? And I and I, we don't want to deal with the Babylon system at all. Fuck Babylon. You know, I see people say, we need to go back to nature. No, you ain't got to go back to nature because nature going to come to you. All this shit going to fall. All your cities and buildings are going to fall, okay? And when your shit fall, you ain't going to be cutting your fucking grass, cutting trees, trimming the dog, and all that pussy-ass shit that you be doing. You want to cut everything. And see, your head on your body is your heaven. And as your heaven goes, as the world goes. So this is why mankind... He's so fucking unnatural with his own body. This is why he's unnatural with the earth. So you want to trim the earth all down the same damn way. You want to cut down every tree. You see, trees are dreadlocks of the earth. Plants are dreadlocks of the earth. And the Babylon system don't like dreads. They like concrete. They want to be smooth like your haircut. Smooth like a baby's booty. You know, you don't wear the crown. You got the Greek and the Roman haircut. 
That's what you got. And then when you, and like people, you know, I'm hardcore because I had people show me, uh, people in Kimmy with haircuts. And so when you show me a Pharaoh back in Kimmy with a haircut, you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say he's a pussy. That's what I'm going to say. He's a pussy. Okay. I would have kicked his kingdom over and built my shit. He never would have been Pharaoh with me there standing behind him. Because we would have killed dude and throw him over in the swamp to the crocodiles, and I would have been Pharaoh. So every pussy nigga you show me in ancient town, I don't, you know, I don't respect it. I'm hardcore. I don't give a fuck because you show me no nigga in Kimmy. If he ain't on what I'm on, if he ain't on what I'm on, he ain't shit. If you show me somebody in Kimmy eat meat, I'm gonna say he was a pussy. I'm gonna say he was a meat eating loser. I wouldn't give a fuck what how many shits he built. I don't give a fuck how big his army was. If he was eating meat, he was getting his hair cut. He was a pussy. He's probably one of the reasons came and fell. And a dough. Come on. I'm in tune with the, with the earth. Show me a motherfucking gorilla. Y'all want to talk about gorilla warfare. Show me a gorilla that's shaving and shit. Just show me one. They don't get no fucking haircuts. Okay? They don't get down like that. And I always get some wise guys say, oh, so should we go back to just this? And I'd be like, yeah, we should go back. My question is, should we go forward on this bullshit y'all got set up? Don't ask me, should we go back to walking around eating fruits with long, nappy hair? Because I'm going to say, yeah, because look at what the results is. Motherfuckers running around in the rat race. Every day you got to pay rent. You got to, even when you pay for your house, you got to motherfucking pay property taxes or they still take your motherfucking house. Every day you was a fucking slave. What make this system so cool? Add up your goddamn bills for the next 30 years. You got that money right now? Okay, you was a fucking slave. I don't give a damn if you got $20,000 in the bank, $50,000 in the bank. How long will that $50,000 pay your bills? So you don't have enough money to pay to live for the rest of your life. So you're a part of the rat race. You're like one of them fucking gerbils running around in the cage. And because so many of y'all want to be some gerbil-ass motherfuckers, then it forced all the rest of us to be forced in the fucking system. What the hell could we do with so many pussies out here? I had a black dude come to my booth one time. He said, hey, brother, uh, man, I like your dreads, man. You know, I would grow some dreads, but they won't hire me. I said, he said, so, uh, how you get a job? Because I know they won't hire you. And I told him straight up. I said, as long as there's a pussy ass nigga like you that'll cut your dreadlocks to go get the job, no, they won't hire me. The reason they won't hire me is because of you, nigga. You the reason they won't hire me. Because you's a buck dancing ass nigga. And as soon as he say, cut your hair to get the job, you go, yes, sir, master. And you cut your motherfucking head, Toby. Nigga, I'm Kunta Kente. Get the fuck out of my face. So in a lot of my videos, I'm going a lot softer than I was going in the 80s. And that's because you are younger people and you came up under so many bald head, bumper clot, meat eating, conscious community scholars that you don't know no better. So I wouldn't quite go as hard on you is I would go on them older, bald head loser ass niggas that sit out here and then ride for no real cultural identity and didn't really push the envelope. So if you can, you know, go back to natural hair. Let your hair be natural. Let your food be natural. Stop killing stuff to eat. Go back to a natural life. And if we can get people to grow natural hair, to eat natural food, then we can get them to join this war on Babylon to knock down this unnatural Babylon system. You see, another main reason that I didn't want to go to Africa besides I needed to come back and help people here is that when I got in the mountains of Hawaii, airplanes were still flying over my head. So I came in with the conclusion, you know, you can't get away from Babylon because they're in the air. They're in the sea. They're everywhere. So what good would it do for me to go to Africa with these Babylon motherfuckers still flying over my head? So until they planes come down and all they shit where they want to fucking fly over you and poison you, 
There's no escape. Babylon must fall before you can be any type of freedom. Just going back to Africa ain't shit if Babylon don't fall because the whole world is Babylon right now. Africa is Babylon as hell. Real talk. People talk about Africa like that's getting out of Babylon. All them motherfuckers is Babylon up the ass. Straight up. The whole world is a Babylon system. Okay? And we must tear this Babylon system down. And it don't always have to be done with war. It can mostly be done with you waging a war on your own personal things you buying and doing yourself. Grow your hair out. Stop eating McDonald's and all these people selling you this Babylon food. Start to work to own your own shit. Start protesting. Man, what am I paying you property property taxes for? I own my motherfucking house already. Give me a list on what the hell I'm paying for. Okay? I'm not going to be paying you. My father bought this house and he was paying $250 a month for his mortgage. Damn, the property taxes is down near that. He paying a little bit over $2,500 a year for his house. And now it's $2,500 a year for the property taxes. So that means my father never owned a house. He just was a slave for the Babylon system. Okay? And it got so bad that people is fucking cultural or conscious community getting on the internet, putting up videos putting ads on the video for the Babylon system and then getting on there talking black power with Babylon system ads on the damn shit. That's why YouTube had to shut y'all fake asses down because you was going to try to halfway chant down Babylon and get paid from Babylon. Get the fuck out of here. I ain't got no ads on my shit because I already know they wasn't, you know, right off the top from my first videos, they said, we ain't giving you no ads, and I wasn't even on what I'm on now. I was just, at first, I was just originally talking. And as I watched, I seen how fucked up the world is, especially through the internet, so I started talking to the whole world. People got mad because they just wanted me to talk to black people. I'm talking to everybody. I'm not just talking to black people. Because first, black people don't even fucking listen. So this whole bullshit where you want all this rah-rah system by just for black shit when you ain't got your shit together, you know, all you weak-ass black men out there scared to grow y'all natural hair, shut the fuck up. Don't be telling me you ready for no revolution when you a punk motherfucker cutting your hair every day. You scared to wear your natural hair. What you hiding your hair for? Don't give me all these bullshit excuses. Okay? And every fuck... And then, okay, let me break down some more shit. Let's, let's really go hard in the motherfucking paint. You know, you got these fake-ass black dudes in the conscious community. And they they claim they know everything about religion. They want to put down Islam. They want to put down Christianity. Right? But these niggas always got a haircut. But the reality is, haircut represents submission. Okay? You go, you know, you want to get in the nation of Islam, cut your hair down and submit to Allah. Okay, you want to be a Buddhist, cut your hair off and submit. You see, you want to be a Christian and go into Christian church, cut your hair off and submit to the reverend. Okay, so a haircut, no matter what the fuck you say, represents submission. That's what it represents. It, it represents that you a pussy, that you submit to shit. I ain't submitting to a goddamn thing. Okay. Fuck out of here. Do I look like a submitting ass nigga to you? So I don't be honoring motherfuckers. A lot of motherfuckers in the conscious community, I give them a pass. They all right. I see what they trying to do, but I don't honor them on that level. I honor Chief Key before I do them motherfuckers. If I went, to, most of these niggas in the conscious community, if I didn't know nothing about nobody, and I went and I seen Chief Keefe. I didn't know nothing about Chief Keefe. And I seen one of them kinds of community niggas. They say pick one. I had picked Chief Keefe. Okay? I picked Two Chain. I picked Lil Wayne. I picked the motherfuckers with the Nazi on their head. I wouldn't pick them bald head motherfuckers. They represent Babylon. They represent submission. They, don't, they ain't hardcore. They ain't hardcore. They got a raise on their head. Come on. How my line look. 
Motherfucker got a do-rag on his shit. I had a fucking perm and waves and shit and Jerry Curls and shit in the 70s. Come on. I didn't want no haircut in 68. I, I stopped wanting a haircut. I wanted a natural. Now you got a motherfucker today ain't even hardcore as I was as a little kid. You ain't even got a natural. How a little kid in the 60s and 68, 69 wanted to look blacker than you and hardcore than you and wanted a natural and you sitting up there got the collegian. That's what they call it. You got the bald head motherfucking army haircut. That's what you got. You got the fucking Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine haircut. Look in the fucking mirror. You look just like you were in the Babylon military. You don't look like no Naya Bingy warrior. Y'all so busy fighting against religion, you don't know how to use it. I go in court all the time. I have my hair under a hat. The bailiff run up to me or the little guard in the court run up to me. Uh, sir, remove your hat. I tell them for religious reasons. I leave my hat on. Because it's a crown. They call it a hat. But it's a crown and I'm a king. And I don't stop being no king because I'm in your motherfucking court. You understand? Don't re Didn't you read my name when you called me? What it say? Pharaoh. So when you call Pharaoh, what the fuck make you think I'm not going to step up there with my crown on? So, you know, it's time to go natural. Go vegan. Go green. Natural hair. All right? Up with natural. Down with fucking Babylon, okay? Fireborn Babylon, okay? All right? Babylon must fall. Then a vow, and there's a vow I make unto his imperial majesty not to trim nor shave and to serve him with all my heart. And this is my identity. You know what I mean? This is my identity. You know what I mean? That's why I have to carry this Congo. I can't leave it behind. You know what I mean? God this represent the most high. When I want to see I tell of his imperial majesty, this is my lifeline. You know what I mean? So, you know, today, you know, some, some grow off. Because if they never cut off, you know, no home with a cherry. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a lot uh, bad. Yes, you know what I mean? Right. So, I mean, never I cut it. So, yeah. it, 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 it shed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Like the tree. You see how the coconut tree sometimes in the gualim, the fermenter tree, the gualim, the orange tree, the gualim. You know what I mean? I saw, I saw it go. Let's start, but why did not peel out my head You know what I mean? Problem. No trouble, like. I. Because the root is there. Yes, yeah. And while the root is there, it will always keep growing. You know what I mean? True. Sure.